So what happens here today in about six hours or earlier? In motion V11. I'm going to make a, a series of videos and in the end I'm going to combine them to an actual review. And it's I hope it's going to be a bit different than, than the videos we've seen so far. Uh, first of all, I do a lot of off-roading and it's not something that is that much shown in, in the other videos. Some rough trails, yeah, but going really out there. I hope I'm going to be able to deliver that one. And this is this is the Scandinavian perspective on the V11. Waiting for the wheel has been uh, first of its kind. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's the the discussions have been so active on on the forum, uh, in good and bad. But it it shows that this is this is a wheel. This the both suspension wheels are are something that that people are more excited than they've been for, I don't know, maybe any wheel before this. And for, for those who think that the V11 suspension is going to be inferior to the S18, uh, I'm going to be able to do some head-to-head -head comparisons, because two of my friends have gotten the S18. One got it and one is going to get it later on. Those who think that V11 is not going to be as good off-road, I aim to prove you wrong. We'll see how it goes. As it happens, UPS screw up. They don't know why, but for some reason the package was not delivered and it got a new event change request. The customer service did, had no idea why or what it means because the, the addition was, was not even complete. So, now I have to get it myself. Hooray UPS! Uh, UPS actually, in Finnish language, it means uh, whoops. That should say something. So here it is. They had a bit of trouble even finding the package. It's funny how I need to be so very careful not to put even the slightest scratch on the wheel. And then I'll go off-roading. Okay, the suspension is empty. The tire seems okay though. Actually, it seems like there's pressure on the negative chamber, because it, it pulls it down. Let me check the battery. Ah, empty battery. I was already hoping that I would ride it a bit here, but I'll just take it home and not start pumping it here. Okay, lift test for an MSX rider. This feels very light. Oh my god! It feels much lighter than the, the MSX. I, I have zero trouble lifting it up. That's a really big surprise. I guess the handle is so much higher that it, it's so easy to lift. Wow! I'm relieved. I was afraid that it might be a bit troublesome for my, my 
bad back. But no, it's okay. And here it is. So I bought two chargers, the official ones. In motion has mentioned that the this wheel should only be charged with these official chargers. It, it does sound strange, but until I, I know if it's just about a, a different connector or or if there's something else going on. Before I put these chargers plugged in, I'm going to measure them just to just to be sure. Wouldn't be the first time. Busted charger toasts a wheel before anyone gets to be happy. 83.5. This meter is very badly calibrated, so 83.6. Perfectly close enough. And here we go. Than it did. Mysterious. Okay, now I get to have a, a proper look. This doesn't f uh, look or feel like a like an electric unicycle. It's in interesting. It's it's really it's, it's well. I'm coming from the MSX and 16x before that, so <laughs> this yeah. This is this is. This this is something else. It's next level, man. Uh, I noticed that I don't have the red cups on the suspension. I only have the regular plastic valve cups. And I think that's how I would have used it anyway. I'm not sure if I should check the top chamber first, now that the bottom is empty. I just want to pump something, so I screw it in, then the lever, then I pump in some air, and here we go, it moves, and there it is, then the lever, and I screw it out. I would expect this to be become easier once the threads wear down a bit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the initial strange sounds when I connected the first charger were because when the battery was, it was really low. The phone was connecting while it was charging and even the headlight could be turned on. Yeah, it had a 10% of battery. Now I'll try to turn it on, actually turn it on for the first time. Oh yeah, this is, this looks familiar. After touching the cutoff button, it does center. Because I just want to be stupid and impatient and try how it feels to jump up and down on the suspension. <laughs> this feels so funny. It really actually does move up and down. <laughs> it's, yeah, funny thing to say, but it really is just bouncing up and down. Oh my god, this is going to be so cool. The tire doesn't doesn't go up and down. It feels good. Yeah, I'll, I have to continue charging us. I just have to get to ride this thing. I just have to. I've waited for three months and now I'm, I'm awfully impatient. <laughs> yeah, this tire has some, 
some kind of factory coating on it and it makes the floor very slippery. 1.85 and from what I've learned on the MSX I will start with 2.5. It might be a bit high but let's see. There we go. And then I wanted to inspect the saddle bolts that some people are having trouble with. And these look perfectly healthy but yes they are thin. No, sorry. One is cracked. Oh, the second is also cracked. But the rear ones, they have both cracked. Yeah, that's, that's a, quite a stupid issue because there's ample space for the plastic material. It could be five times thicker and it will have no problem fitting in. But since InMotion is listening to the customers and even every single complaint lately, I'm 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 sure that they will change that. I'm pretty pretty sure that I have the uh, the first batch Z bearings that are not as well protected one from water than the later ones. But for Duff, it it required a a horrible storm, and he left the wheel without moving or, or riding for a week or so. So every, everything that went in there had no chance to get out. I have noticed during the winter time that uh, for example the, the top of the tire it does not dry. I don't remember how many days I, I waited but it, it really it does not dry. It, it might take uh, actually weeks I guess it, it's such a closed space in there that the, the moist has no place to escape. Actually these top valve covers are really easy to remove. But since I'm, I'm waiting for it to charge I, I can't help myself. I just have to play around with it. Someone was asking about the, the stand if it interferes with the tire. And what happens if you're riding and the stand falls down. It's not loose at any point. And and there's there's a hump on the side, so it, it, it takes a good amount of force to get it to the dump. But it does reach the tire. But when you're riding forward, the tire goes up at, at the rear side. So even even if it hits it does nothing because the tire will push it away. But if you are going backwards, then uh, still it doesn't. I can feel a slight uh, increased resistance, but but really it's it's not anything that the the motor can't handle. So that that will not be an issue. But I want to document with the experience that the V11 is for a Scandinavian MSX rider who loves off-road and, and is not the lightest of, of riders. My weight is some, something like 210 or 220 LBS. I'll put it to 50, then I'll remove the pump, then I'll connect the pump again just to see how low it goes when removing. Now it released the pressure on the hose. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so now I'm connecting the pump again and it says 35. So I guess I I will put it to 60. I wonder if I can I can release the pressure now and then screw the end. Oh now it's much easier. I so wish I could ride right now. Uh, one guy mentioned epoxy putty, that it, it should work great for strengthening the, the plastic parts that hold the saddle. It seemed like a good idea and I might do that myself. I thought that uh, this saddle 
connectors were broken because of over tightening but I now realize that the, the screws are threaded in a, in a way that it can't over tighten so it does it does not squeeze the plastic part in this way it is just too thin what else can I do I just want to go ride can't do anything else but to wait yes it's getting late and dark I just can't wait till tomorrow to go for a first ride. This is the first time I get on and ride. The battery is now 50%. Uh, it was it was about 10% when I when I when I got it. And both the app and the firmware are updated. <laughs> well, this light is crazy. Okay, first try. I'm so used to pad using pads. This feels a bit scary. But I want to get the, the first impressions without adding any pads. But the big bump on the side that you probably didn't see. Incredible. That's when the suspension really did its job. This feels well. Everybody says it feels smooth. No surprises there, but it feels natural. And yeah, the pedals are a bit high, but uh, it's not at all as much of an issue issue that I thought it would be, based on what some people say. Uh, the pedals on my MSX are modified a bit. And they are, I'd say, half an inch or th three quarters of an inch higher than the regular ones, but, but still, this is not bad at all. Okay, I leave the tripod on, in my car and I'll shoot more videos tomorrow when there's more light. See ya. I am... Um ride a really good, really expensive, really new car for the first time. You know, after getting used to used to uh, really old and crappy cars or, or just average cars. But, oh man, surprise, uh, sudden, uh, all of a sudden everything, every single little thing just feels so much nice, nicer and so much better. It's, it's, this is it, V11 is it, after the MSX. Yeah. I do have to, uh, do have to pump the suspension a bit differently. Uh, I put it, uh, 
150 uh, on the bottom chamber and, and, and 60 on the, on the top one. And this is going down, uh, going down curbs is it, like a, a, a dream come true. Seriously, man. But uh, I do feel that I am, I am riding a bit low. I can, I can bottom out the suspension quite easily. So I'll try to put a bit more. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, this is, oh my God. This, this is just. I want more bumps. Where are all the bumps? It's like they've disappeared all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. now, now, now I understand what people mean that that you can still feel the bumps. And well, yeah, it's like a no matter how expensive the car, car is, if you go down a curb, even if the suspension is perfect just perfect. You can feel the, the tire hit the ground. So there, there's this slight jolt. It's a, it's a wrong word because it's too strong, but there's a... Well, yeah, there's a feeling. But uh, <laughs> it's, so, it's so tiny. It's so tiny. And, and, and then the, the foot plates follow my feet, my weight. This is just crazy. This is crazy. I am blown away. I am blown away. And yeah, the light. Uh, when riding uphill, it, it actually feels like... Well, I would hope that it would, it would point up higher, but you know, that's how it has to be. And then when going downhill, then it would be too high and again. I'm pretty sure this is perfect combination. <laughs> yeah, this is like I'm looking at my brand new motorcycle. There are are a few threads uh, discussions at, at the forum where people are considering whether they should buy the V11 or, or MSP, MSX, something like that. Come on guys, really? The For me, the suspension is is a big enough of a deal that that my all my other requirements regarding speed and and anything else they are just they are secondary. I don't think I will ride my MSX ever again. Actually, I'm pretty sure I won't. Actually, I'm 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 perfectly positive and confident I won't. Unless something really strange or surprising and bad happens to the B11. This is a really amazing wheel. Nothing short of an amazing wheel. For, for a re reference, uh, my MSX has uh, more than 13,000 kilometers on it and altogether I have ridden more than 23 maybe even 24,000 kilometers on an electric unicycle and whenever possible I try every wheel that that, that I can so I have I have a, a pretty good idea of the first impressions of, of actually every wheel that, that is currently in production. Except the S18, but that will be fixed tomorrow. There's a group ride that 
a guy who got the, got his S18 yesterday. We're going to meet up. And I'm sorry, but I already know that I'm going to bash it. Because it's it's just everything I know about it, everything I, I watched in the videos, read reviews and, and everything, I just know that it's... It's not a complete package. Its priorities have been uh, scattered around, so it's it's not it's not designed as a whole. That's how I feel about it. Well, tomorrow I'll write it, and things might change about how I think about it. But yeah, this is an incredible wheel. I can't say that enough. And I'm sure I'll say it on every video I <laughs> make. Okay, see you on the next one. Okay, here we are. I wanted to go out and, and just test the, the new wheel just quickly. I was out there for maybe one and a half hours or maybe two. I didn't ride, ride very far because I it's a new wheel for me and, and I'm not comfortable going fast and without the pads that I'm used to. Uh, but just a, a few things. There are very small things that uh, that are not optimal and, and I'm sure that the emotion will keep tweaking on them to make them better than they are. But I also realized that that this wheel is so darn close to perfection that it, it makes you nitpick, you know? Even <laughs> take the MSX for example. There are so many things that are so so stupid and you don't start to complain about but the little things when the big things are, are wrong. But here when when the when the whole concept is so so incredibly marvelous. And the, the very, very small things kind of, they pop up. Low battery tilt back. Well, that's not a small thing. And I'm not sure if they have uh, updated it yet since since Mar Marley's comments on it. But but yeah, it, it, it tilts the pedals back too far. And my ankles don't bend that far. I knew that the battery was was low, so I was riding slowly, and then all of a sudden, it started the warnings and the tilt back, and it went so far that I had to, I had to jump off. That's something that it just has to change. Thinking about the uh, the battery plan as a whole, I wasn't riding very aggressive aggressively, because I, I I don't have the the power pads that I'm used to, which are quite aggressive on the MSX that I've made. So I took it quite easy, but, but it did feel like it lets you ride as fast as you want, as powerfully as you want, all the way down to a certain point when it says that, that yeah, now, now the battery is almost empty. And it starts uh, beeping, saying a warning and tilt back all at the same time and then it literally throws you off then you can switch to the to the go home mode and then you can can ride again uh, but uh, after that point uh, it really does make you uh, ride more uh, gently Th that's also one thing if the power consumption goes over 300 watts in the go home mode then it will tilt back and 300 watts is very, very little. And a big, heavy guy like me, it's okay for cruising on a flat ground. You can still go like, uh, well, I was going more than 30 kilometers per hour on level ground. But when there's uh, some uphill, then it slows you down to a very, very slow speeds. I'm talking about 10 kilometers per hour and that limit should be a bit higher so that when a heavier guy is going home that 
he can still ride uphill. Slowly and gently, yes, but not not walking speeds. Uh, when the battery plants were brought up a few months ago, before the production wheel was ready, uh, InMotion said that they are going for a more linear battery plant. Uh, this is not it. This definitely is not it. It's not, not linear. It's You can go as, as fast as you want and then you can go very gently. Uh, I wasn't able to detect any, any slope. Yes, I, I didn't ride very fast, but, but I did try harder accelerations on, on, on both sides of the, the go-home limit. So, I don't like that very much. Since the, the batteries go, when they are losing power... Oh, it went to sleep. When the batteries are losing power, they, they do it well, not linearly, but they keep going down all the time. They don't stay level and then suddenly drop. So the other manufacturers, they follow the, the actual battery power capabilities. So the, the top speed, it goes slowly down and down and down. And I do like the fact that you can, even with a very low battery, you can ride faster and gently, so that you don't have to go only 15 kilometers per hour. If you can ride faster and go gently without doing any hard accelerations. But I would think that most riders are, are aware that the, the battery power starts dropping as soon as you start riding from the 100% down. So I'm not sure if they're trying to make an image of, of a, like a motorcycle. Uh, and then when the when the gas runs out, you switch to the to the spare tank, and then you can ride only carefully and slowly, and try to find the gas station. I think they're they're going for that, but I don't think they should, because that that's not what these electric vehicles. That's not how they work. They are trying to make it something they're not. The light is is stunning at the area that it, it lights up. But it doesn't light at all above the, uh, the horizontal line. I think it should give a bit more light above the, the shapes also. So I, I noticed that when I was riding uphill, it was pitch black outside when I was riding. Uh, I was riding uphill and, and of course the wheel naturally tilts very slightly forward when I do that, when I accelerate uphill. So the the area that I could see became very short and I had to ride very slowly because of that, because I, I couldn't see far enough. And I actually had to play with the, the pedal tilt setting so that I could see far enough. If there would be just a, just a glimpse, just a dim glow of light that would go higher up also, that would help tremendously. I, d I don't know if I could try to put some modification. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll try something that will disperse the light a bit wider. But yeah, at the, at the lowest light power setting, that light is stunning and amazing. And then you put it on a maximum, and then it's <laughs> the jaw drops again. It really is, is that it's just crazy bright, and the shape it's it's so sharply defined. It's 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 really incredible how they've done that. So I uh, I kept toying around with the the suspension pressures a bit. I had the pump with me. And uh, I did notice a few things. Uh, 60 psi on the top pressure seems to be a bit too much. Because it, it starts to make the ride stiff. It's not like a, a race car suspension where it's sensitive but stiff. But, but it, it really it didn't, it didn't work that well. So I dropped it down to 50. 
I had a 60 on top and, and 170 on, on the bottom at one point and it was it was too stiff it, it didn't work it didn't feel like it would it was working how it was supposed to uh, I lowered the top chamber to 50 and then I lowered the bottom chamber but I, I would say that uh, for a 200 pound guy 150 on the bottom and 50 on top is a very good starting point and people who say that that it's not float yet, that it doesn't float over over bumps you have got the suspension set up wrong because it, it really does that it it really is amazing right it's it it is floating above the bumps it it really is i also noticed that when when going up curbs or or other bumps just a little uh, pre preload on the suspension so that when the when the curve comes you are at the higher position on, on the suspension and that makes it go so smooth <laughs> so smoothly that it, that it was funny it, it really was funny yeah that is it's crazy uh, I was riding in the the off-road mode which uh, I think was a, a bit more progressive pedal tilt mode. The pedal sensitivity I ended up with 98, and that that was that was good. It's a surprisingly big difference between 100 and, and 95. But 97, 98. That that's really where I like it. Uh, the other mode, yeah, it was a bit too soft or too loose for me. But uh, even still, it wasn't loose in a bad way, like some older King songs are. They they are really crazy loose. But it, it was a nice loose, but but just a bit too soft for me. I did check the uh, the saddle bolts right away when I I got this wheel, and two of them are cracked a bit. On mine, I will be getting the the epoxy putty. That one local writer recommended that it it's easy to form. Easy to form around the around the area where it needs support, and, and it should do a very good job. Give you, giving more structure to the to the design. The pedals are very wide, wonderfully wide. And that I have big feet that works very very well for me, but they are quite a bit shorter than the ones that I made for myself on, on the on the MSX. So it, it was a bit something to get used to. The sense of grip on the tire it takes it takes a little time. Um, I, I didn't fall or anything or even slip, but I I did notice that I I don't have that feeling. Of, of the grip and, and the, where it's going and, and the suspension is a big part of that with the MSX I can ride very hard and I know when I'm at the limits of, of the grip on a dirt road with this one I have no idea when I find a very good tire one that has, has very defined knobs but still has a center line so that, that it still turns nicely. With a tire like that and the suspension like this and then, then some pads on here, this is this is just a crazy machine. This is absolutely crazy. There was this one road base that was never built. It has all kinds of rocks and it's it's really slow and difficult to ride with the MSX. And with this one <laughs> I was, I was, oh my god, I was floating over the rocks, over the small pivots and the, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I wish it, it would, have, would have been day light out so I could have taken some videos. But uh, we are going to shoot a lot of videos with my brother and uh, then the other local guy got the V11 as well and 
We will be making a lot of vid videos with the Scandinavian aspect. Yeah. If you're looking at the specs of, of the wheels and you're comparing the V11 to any non-suspension wheel, come on, man. No, it's not like that. This this is a different ball game. It really is. It, it's a different thing. If you want to ride a, a suspension unicycle, well, if you have ever ridden, yes, you will want it. Absolutely will. And then the specs doesn't even matter anymore. Because it's, it's so much nicer to ride than any, any other. Luxurious. That, that's what I felt. It, there, there was a huge level of luxury in everything about the wheel. The suspension, uh, the mo motor behavior, the riding mode programming, the front light, everything luxurious in a way that I, I never imagined possible on a, on a unicycle. Okay, uh, uh, I have to sleep a bit. I'm <laughs> getting really tired. Good night.